and amen. Are you blessed today or what? Any day above ground is a good day. Vertical is a great position. Amen? There are three things that I love. Number one, the goodness of God. Number two, coming to Elgin every Super Bowl week. Number three, the Patriots are not in the Super Bowl. Woo! What? Amen. We're going to have fun. If you're a Patriots fan, the offering's already been received. So, anyway, thank you guys for having me. It is an honor to be here with you as it is for so many years. I, I love this house. I love Pastor McCorkle. I miss Mama Mac. Uh, you know, my mom passed uh, three years ago last month. And so I know the void, and there's a transition. And so uh, it's, it's just a good place to be in a community of believers. Amen? Tell your neighbor, you need me. No, tell your neighbor, seriously, you need me. And you may be telling somebody that that is mad at you right now. But it's all right. Well, I didn't know I was coming to Dr. Phil. You, you're not coming to Dr. Phil. I've come here to tell you, you are valuable in spite of your screw-ups. Amen? And so, I, I just, we are going to have a blast uh, this morning uh, at and of course, the, did I mention there was, did you mention there was a chili cook-off? Oh, oh, you didn't. <laughs> Give me the announcements. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a blast tonight. And uh, so anyway, and then Monday evening, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We're just going to go a little deeper and deeper and deeper into this. But thank you guys. Uh, for being a blessing to the ministry with your giving. This is how we do what we do. I, I, I've done this full-time for 30 years, travel every week of the year, and uh, we don't beg people for money. We don't give T-shirts, mugs, and pens. We just figure if the truth sets you free, you want to be a part of it. And so I thank you for that very, very much. Uh, out on the table as you go out, let me get this out of the way. There is the new series on destiny, Don't Die With Hope. How many knows your destiny is bright? Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11, I am God and I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and hope and of a bright future. But how many graveyards are filled with believers who died with hope? Can God lie? Did he tell Moses, I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey, to the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Amorites, Perizzites, Gergesites? It sounds like a pest control company. He said, I'm taking you there. But Moses never got to enjoy it. How did Moses die with hope? This series, it, it, now, I taught this at a younger believer church, and I am not politically correct. If you don't know me, I will not suck up to you. I don't know how much money you have to give me because you're not my source. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Is that okay? Okay. I'm kind of the Donald Trump of the church world. <laughs> I am out to make church great again. Amen? <laughs> Woo! I don't know where that came from. But anyway, that series will absolutely help you. And if, if you're not a Trump fan, don't be offended. And if you can be offended, you're insecure. And maybe I do need to be Dr. Phil for you. You know, you just got to have fun, Jeff. 
I just met you, dog, but I think I like you. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, sir, not dog. And then there's a brand new series on the power of prayer. If you've listened to me enough over the years, you may have some insinuation. Well, he doesn't believe in praying. I believe in praying. I just believe in praying right. I'm a preacher's kid, 71 years old. I've been in this all my life. And when you don't want to attend a prayer meeting, you don't know how to pray. Anyway, <laughs> this goes in to what it is scripturally, beyond religion, beyond tradition, to pray. And it goes into the science of how prayer, correct prayer, affects your brain and your body. Uh, anyway, uh, the series are either 15 or 20. Uh, it would be 55 for all three, but if you want all three, they're 40. And uh, you can write a check, cash, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, Lakefront Property. Or I really want an oil well down by the beach. Oh, I almost forgot. A, a lot of people, how many knows technology changes so quickly? If you have a newer vehicle, you don't even have a CD player. Okay. And so we're going USB. And over the last few years, I've had people say, hey, would you put these series on CD or on USB? And I'm a slow changer. I finally got rid of 8-track and went to cassette. And then I went to CD. That was a big transition because I spent a lot of money on cassette duplicators. And now a few people's needing CD. And when you're a minister that you don't know what you're getting paid every week, it's hard to just go buy a bunch of stuff that you don't know if people's going to want it or not. And so I had to make that transition. And uh, anyway, now everything is USB. All of the series on our website, I only have three series here. We have over 50 series on the website uh, all of the series except Destiny and the Power of Prayer are on this one USB flash drive. If you bought all the series, it would be over $800. If you want the flash drive, it's $300. If you're able to afford that. If not, uh, you just do what you can do. But thank you for your giving. Thank you for everything. We're going to have fun. That is the goal of me being here. Tell your neighbor, he's happy because God is good and the patriots are not on the game. <laughs> and now that we got rid of Garrett, maybe my cowboys will be next year. Amen? Next one to go is Jones. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm bad about it voicing my opinion. Father, I call this house blessed. I was driving up this morning, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Someone here today, and it may be more than one, diverticulitis. Whoever you are, come to me. Diverticulitis. I've heard that, I bet you, five or six times. And you don't have to come. You just slip up your hand. I'll call you whole. Is that you? Well, there you go. Yeah. He's in pretty bad shape. What's his name? You said that. His name is Jay Smith. Well, there you go. Yeah. Man, I, uh, that is not a term I use a lot. It's not something that I've been reading up on. It just came to me. You tell him today, February 2, and remind him the year the Patriots were not in the Super Bowl was the same day I call him whole. And it's done. It's done. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Father, I want to thank you because this is not something I had in my heart. It's something you put in my heart. Yes. And I set free. Yes. Thank God for medical science, yes. but they're still practicing. Yes. I call wholeness yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Call them whole. I agree. In Jesus' Thank name. You. Are you blessed? Hmm. Oh, we're going to have fun. Absolutely going to have fun. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of 2 Corinthians, the, or 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. <laughs> Almost messed with you, didn't I? Thank you, Lord. I break frustration off of you. You have prayed and prayed and prayed, and nothing changes. And so you pray more, and you have other people pray for you. I don't think I know you. But I can tell you this, what you have almost succumb to accept as normal, I stop it. I call you healed. Okay? You've done everything you can to stop rolling downhill you're too young to feel this old you look in the mirror and say oh my god this has aged me 20 years I restore all the years that have been stolen mentally and physically. You will not live out a generational curse of perpetuating. Now the problem is you've gained more knowledge of the situation than you have the answer. So from this day forward, you gain more knowledge of the answer and reject the voices of unbelief. Okay? We'll call you whole. Call you whole. Are you ready, sweetie? 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Tell somebody this is going to be good. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. Hmm. Hmm. I just met you. Remind me your name. I'm sorry. Brittany. Brittany. No. Brittany? Okay. Your mama. Just a piece. And I don't know you, but a piece over her. That, and, and again, I don't know her, but I know northerners, and anything above the Red River is north, isn't it? Amen. 
but there'll be a peace. Sometimes, and parents are good at this, and your parents, you deal with things the kids don't know about because you don't want to trouble them. But there will be such a calm and a peace to something she's dealing with that she has not exposed to you. Okay? And I have no idea what I'm talking about. But I know his voice. Okay? Yeah. So 1 Corinthians 12, or if, if you're videoing, can I just hang down here? Can we just talk a little bit? It looks like I have more hair when I'm down here under the lights. <laughs> And I'm looking at the bald guy when I said that. Amen. <laughs> hey, if you're going to have friends, make sure they're bigger than you. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. The word says, For as the body... Somebody say, I'm the body. For as the body is one and has many members... Tell your neighbor again, you need me. But all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Can I retranslate that? There is a difference between being a believer and being a Christian. A believer stands alone. A Christian functions in the body. I, I do, and, and my tech guys was saying, hey, Mark, you need to get on Facebook. I don't even know how to read the replies. I just post a sermon once a week. And I got into a thought, it, and, it, and go check it out at Facebook, and there's a YouTube channel, Mark Shell Ministries. Lots of sermons. But I started thinking about this a little deeper because a lot of people only get saved so they can go to heaven. They're called believers. But then there's some people that get saved and actually enter their ministry. They're called Christians. A believer has to ask to be blessed. A Christian's, the blessing takes over them without request. I'm going to smoke a holy cow today. <laughs> Discouragement won't rule you. The frustration, is this okay? The Absolute mental hell you've been through almost two years. You put all your heart into one bowl and it was shattered. And you've spent time, all that time, you function but you haven't been whole in almost four years. The bowl just broke two years ago. You have wasted your time trying to put something back together. You, are you hearing me? You have wasted your time trying to put something back together that will never be. I'm telling you, move on. 
Is that straight enough? And what's hard is to see yourself moving on because you put so much of your value in that thing. You let them value you. So I restore you, sweetie. You hear me? Today, what you have prayed for for so long, I release to you. You're going to feel a confidence you have not felt for a long, long time. You will not become arrogant but you will become confident, okay? So, there are many members, but there is one body. Now, watch this. The goal of a believer should not be to go to heaven, pastor. The goal of a believer is to become a body, let, let me put it this way, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to, well, they're paying me by the hour, and I get an extra bowl of chili. Did I mention they're having a chili cook-off yeah. today? <laughs> how many knows what a hippo looks like? But how many knows what it's called when a bunch of hippos get together? called a crash a group of hippos together are called a crash a hippo by itself we know what it is but you put a bunch of them together and it's called a crash it takes on a new identity how many knows what an emu looks like but if you get a bunch of emus together what is what are they called a mob. See? Same emu, but if you get them together, they take on a new identity. You get it. How many? Everybody knows what an elephant looks like, right? But if you put a bunch of elephants together, what are they called? A parade. Takes on a new identity. This is going to be good, Pastor. Everybody knows what a fish is, don't you? But if you get a bunch of fish together, they're called a... So even though it's a fish, it took on a new identity. Hmm. Everybody knows what a vulture looks like, right? But if you get a bunch of vultures together, what are they called? A committee. That's, <laughs> hello, who all's involved in the church committee? What I'm trying to get through to you is this. You have one identity as a believer. But when a bunch of believers get together, it's called a body. Oh, my God. Are you a believer or are you functioning in your calling? See, the word says, and we usually use this at tithe and offering time, give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Uh, whatever you put into somebody is going to come back to you. Texas translation, if you're having to ask for it, it's because you're not giving it. I need to write a Red River translation. <laughs> if I'm having to ask for a blessing, it's because I have yet to become one. So why did God call you to do something? So you wouldn't have to call on him to do something. Oh my God. There are many members, but there's one body. 
So until, well, Mark, given it shall be given. What do I give? Give of your calling. Stop being just a believer. Well, I have never, <laughs> I have never been to church and had a preacher tell me stop being a believer. I'm telling you, start being a part of the body like never before. Because, see, there are many members of the body. But, uh, can, uh, sweetie, are you still up there? I lost it. Can we go to the next verse? And we'll read a few more. I told her I was going to give her a hard time. Of course, she'd kick my butt in a heartbeat. But, <laughs> or posterior, I'm sorry. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. So the only one that is holding your divorce against you is you. If you're in a religion that holds your divorce against you, you need to find another religion. See, I don't see mistakes as disqualificators. I see mistakes as places you now have an understanding of how other people are hurting. So if you're being hurt, what's keeping you from helping someone else? Hmm. I'm just saying. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and have all been made to drink. Somebody say drink. That word drink from the Old Testament definition means to take to thought. We've all been made to take into thoughts to the one spirit. Somebody say spirit. That word spirit in the English comes from the Greek derivative, which means a mental disposition. So we all have the opportunity as a believer to function in the body. Next verse, please. Oh, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Tell your neighbor again, you need me. I hope this is okay. It's what was... On my heart. Hmm. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it not therefore of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole hearing, if if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set. Somebody say, it's his fault that you need me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh. God has set you. to where you need to function. Well, what's the big deal about me functioning? Because as you give out of what you were called to do, it will be given back to you, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. What you pour into another man's bosom is going to come back to you. Every problem we go through as human beings is to hinder our gifting because if the gifting is hindered the blessings are hindered did I tell you we're having a chili cook off (laughs) what's this next one please and if all were all one member where would the body be But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. There's one giraffe, 
But if you get a bunch of giraffes together, they're called a tower. Even though they're still a giraffe, when they hook up with other like giraffes, they take on a new identity. You have identified as a believer confessing the Lord Jesus Christ, but have you identified as the body of Christ functioning in what God has set in your heart to do? A believer has to ask for a blessing. The body just flows in it. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to, there's so much here, but I'm going to give it to you quick, and we're, we're just going to go deep into this stuff this week. So get over the chili tonight and come back Monday night. You know, I have 14, 15 albums of music. I've, I've sang most of my life. And when you sing, you have to open your mouth. Now, I've had, uh, le let me see your hand, sweetie. See, you have a beautiful hand. No, you do. And uh, you don't know me, but I'm, I'm not flirting with your wife. I'm just saying, she has a beautiful hand. Some people have ugly hands. I've had people, you know, it's like, hey, dude, seriously, you do have some very proportionate ears. They're not Dumbo. I'm not going to hang on to them like a parachute. They're very proportionate. And you can look at other people and say, sweetie, I love your blue eyes. See, now that made you feel good, made you feel good. Hope I didn't embarrass you. Made you feel good. Why? Because you can see the hand. You can see the foot. You can see the ear. You can see the eye. But not everybody was called to the scene ministry. And in all these years of singing songs and opening my mouth and bellowing out notes, I've never had anybody in 71 years tell me, Mark, I love your uvula. Has anybody told you that, Jerry? Or I'm sorry, Pastor, Pope, <laughs> potentate, and kisses ring every morning. But I have never had anybody tell me, I love your uvula. Oh my God, it is the best looking uvula I've ever seen. You ever heard that, man? No, none of us. And we're laughing because that's... That's facetious. It's ridiculous. No one has ever complimented. But the uvula is as much a part of the body as the ear. The ear can't do what the uvula does. That little uvula, the little punching bag in the back of your throat... It produces enough saliva in an adult's lifetime to fill two swimming pools. And in your saliva, God gave you chemicals that heals your organs and tissues. They tell people who have been through major colon surgeries... It has been documented by medical science. Many times the doctor will encourage the patient chew gum because chewing gum produces more saliva knowing the healing will mark I just stand at the door and greet. But if you don't function, the whole body's going to suffer. You may be thinking, I'm the one that just makes the coffee. But if, and nobody has ever appreciated me. I've never had anybody tell me I got a good looking uvula. But I need the uvula. Are you, God get this in us. You are so valuable, it's ridiculous. 
the body is waiting on you to function. You have a calling. You may be thinking, well, I'll never get on stage, and I've been in this long enough. There's some people over the years, brother, God's called me to play the guitar. And you just want to tell them, you suck. <laughs> or or y'all don't say suck here. Uh, you're not good. <laughs> you know? And, and, and so they'll get up there. You're not called to that. It doesn't mean you're not needed. Why do you have to be seen? Because you're insecure. Why don't you function in your unseen ministry? Because somewhere in your life, you have let someone exercise witchcraft over you. What is witchcraft in the scripture? It's not Ouija boards. I mean, it includes that. We understand that. But the word witchcraft in the, from the Greek language means to be under pharmaceutical. Who have you allowed to drug you to make you think you're not qualified? What do you mean, Mark? A controlling spirit will always devalue you. How does a person devalue you? They do things to reveal your negative emotions, and then they remind you of those negative emotions later so they can control an upcoming situation. Who are you allowing to keep you from functioning? Well, I'm a believer. But when are you going to become the body? Do you know what these counties need around here? They don't need another church. Churches are a dime a dozen. They need a functioning body. They need somebody that says, I may not be a musician. I may not be a singer. I may not be a preacher behind a pulpit. I may be the person that God's just put on my heart. Send out a text on Facebook every day about the goodness of God. We would miss you if you didn't function. You may be the person you're thinking, oh, I, I, you know, what I do seems so menial. Why do you feel like what you were set by God to do as menial? Because you're letting someone from your past control the value of your worth. There you go. Good work. Good work. I don't have to be seen to function. You know, my dad, who is, uh, he's 83 now. His dad's minister all my life. And you're thinking, he's 83 and you're 71. <laughs> yeah, we start early in Oklahoma. <laughs> I ain't as good as I once was. <laughs> but watch this. My dad, uh, he tells, uh, dad has no wrinkles in his thumb. In his right thumb. Never in all my life. It's just straight skin. He can't bend it. Nothing. And he told me years ago, he said when he was a little boy, this was before the plastic bottles and stuff, of course. He said, I was running out the house as a, as a young boy with a pop bottle in my hand. And I fell and when it broke, it just sliced my thumb. And of course, back then, they didn't have the technology that we have today, so they just sutured it up, boom, it grew back, no wrinkles. Now, if dad writes something, it looks like chicken scratch. He never appreciated a wrinkle until it didn't function. God get it in us. You may think... What you do, sir, at a men's breakfast you have with your buddies every Thursday or Friday morning, you think, ah, I'm not really called to minister, but you're called to give them something God has put on your heart. I would miss that wrinkle because the uvula wasn't called to be a wrinkle. The ear wasn't called to be a wrinkle. 
Can you serve God being a wrinkle? Oh my God. Tell your neighbor, I love your wrinkles. I want you to understand, we, we sometimes look and say, well, I, I go to a church. That's not functioning in the body. Now, I'm, I'm going to clarify something. Just because you go to church doesn't make you the body. Functioning in your calling, that's a giraffe. But until that giraffe starts functioning with other giraffes, it's not a tower. Well, am I still going to heaven? If that's all you're worried about, you can dismiss yourself now. And I'm very straight. But you've got people to reach that I'll never see. You've got people to reach that these pastors cannot reach. God didn't give you a job just to pay your bills. He gave you the place you're supposed to function as the body. We look at our hands and say, oh, you know, and even Pastor Angie, no, you have beautiful hands. And we say, oh, 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 yeah, oh, I need my thumb. I learned to appreciate my wrinkles from watching my dad. At his age, he has trouble buttoning buttons on his shirt because he can't wrinkle it. He can't bend it. I need those. I need that thumb. My forefinger, how else could I tell you where to go? My middle finger, how else could I drive through Austin? Oh, oh, come on. (laughs) Get her done. Your ring finger? Yeah, you need. But nobody ever says, of all your fingers, your pinky. Oh, my Lord, it's beautiful. (laughs) Nobody has ever said that. You think, oh, if I didn't have a pinky, I'll be all right. But do you realize your little finger calculates for 50% of your whole hand's grasping power? But it's never noticed. Why do you have to be noticed to function? Why do you have to be appreciated to do what you were set to do? Don't ever, you know, we always give a lot. I hope this isn't too elementary, but I mean, we need to hear this. I appreciate the accolades. People say, oh, that was a great sermon. You saw me. But when I leave this stage, I'm no longer the eye or the ear the hand or the foot. Sometimes I'm just the guy that bought somebody's gas that never told them who I was. You give and it will be given back to you. I've had preachers over the years tell me, say, Mark, if you'll just tell the people your needs, they'll give better. If I have to tell you my needs, it's proof I'm not functioning. And that's just my mentality. See, everyone, this young lady right here, God's called you, I I know, baby, you may be shy, (laughs) but God's called you to do things he hadn't called me to do. Just function. Just function. And what you've almost given up on and said, I can live without it. I break it. I give you your dream back. 
You didn't give up on you at first. You gave up on your dream. And now you've been trying to learn how to live with you without a dream. I restore all of that back to you. The problem is you've looked in the wrong place. There'll be a door open that your dreams will awaken again. So don't settle for plan B. Okay? All right. Somebody say, just function. Yeah. You just function. Be the uvula. Be the wrinkle. You know? I don't have to be seen. To be a part. That's right. Stop being a believer and be a member of the body. We've had memberships to churches as believers, but have you put your membership in the body? If Every one you guys have around here would just start functioning. If you would just function and not need appreciation and not need recognition. I was at a church some time ago. I had never been there. Pastor, uh, I, I was there for an extended time like here. And not being there, you know, I, I, I was there and, and worship team led us all the way up to 1130 afterwards. Pastor's like, uh, do you want us to do anything different? And I said, well, if you don't mind, uh, after today, could you cut your music back a little bit so I have more time to minister? Because it always looks bad on the preacher when you sing for an hour and a half. Well, I mean, I, I'm just being straight up. <laughs> and, and so, anyway, uh, the worship leader, who evidently needed to be seen, did not like that, and they never came back. And, I, and I, of course, I told the pastor, man, I wouldn't offend anybody for anything. But if you can be offended in ministry, it's because you were trying to function outside your calling. If you have to be appreciated to function, who have you let control you to make you think what you're called to do is just not worth it? And I, I, I'm just, I'm moving. It's 11.59, and doggone it, I was trying to beat the Baptist to the buffet. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, though. Bad decisions. You can look back and say, God, I wish I, I would have, I could have, I should have. But who can't say that? Amen. Hey, if there was a refund line in life, I'm in the front of it. You know what I'm saying? Am I talking to anybody? There's no refund line. We've all made decisions. But a lot of your decisions have brought you to where you are. And what has been a grenade in your life since you were around a 19-year-old girl. And you just live on the pieces. You're a survivor. You're tough. You're tougher in a boot. I don't know you. I don't believe. But you're tough. But God says to tell you, he's not putting the pieces back together. He's giving you a new life. So you have a new grenade. Don't blow it up. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's changing, baby. 2020, you're going to see some radical changes in the way you think about stuff. Yeah. It's always nice to get a new grenade, isn't it? 
Tell your neighbor, I need you. Tell somebody else, you need me. Pastor Craig Groeschel, who is the head of Life Church, which is the mega church, 33 campuses in the United States, all fully paid for, five services every weekend, each campus totally packed. He tells this story, and I'm I'm finishing because my 12 o'clock has arrived. He said he was at OCU in Edmond on a scholarship. He was a jock, a baseball player, a partier, just an athlete on a scholarship with the right to party. He said, I was walking through campus one day and there was a guy that gives out Gideon Bibles. Now, most of you know what a Gideon Bible is if you've been to a hotel. What an awesome organization handing out these things. And he said, this guy was handing out little New Testament Bibles. He said, I walked by, the guy handed me one, I took it, and all of a sudden, now he's not a Christian, All of a sudden, he said, I heard something tell me, you need to read that. He said, I read it, and I gave my heart to Christ. Twenty-some years later, now the mega pastor in America, he got curious. Who was that guy? I didn't see a hand. I didn't see a foot. I couldn't see an ear. It may have been, I've never had anybody tell me, Mark, I love your meniscus. (laughs) But you don't miss the meniscus behind the knee until it's not operating correctly. He said, I had my staff go to the Gideons, and of course they keep great records, and they found out who the guy was working that campus over 20 years ago. He said, I want him in my office. An older gentleman, he's got the picture of him. The older gentleman walked into his office like, what am I doing here? And Pastor Craig said, you see all of this? Thank you. If I hadn't have got that Bible from you, and here's the thing, that man didn't even know Craig. And Craig didn't know him. But if the body doesn't function, the world's going to know it. It is time to start praying and saying, God, what do you want me to do? God, I don't care if it's small and I'm unseen. Just use me. Just use me in whatever capacity you want to use me. Nobody, you know, how many messages have you heard over the years about the feeding of the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves of bread? That's awesome. But how many times have you had a sermon taught on who caught the fish? Who baked the bread? Who ground the wheat to make the bread? Who baited the hook? See, we always in church, in a limited understanding, only appreciate the hand, the ear, the eye, the foot, what you can see. But it's the little things you do that makes up the body so don't ever discount and devalue yourself over what God has called you to do it may be a text it may be Facebook it 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 may be just giving somebody an encouraging word every day and that's God calling now the lunch lines filling up 
But whatever God has called you to do, just do it. I think that was the first miracle. When Mary came to Jesus and his boys and said, see, we have no wine here. They've run out of wine. And then she looks at the disciples and just says, whatever he says for you to do, just do it. You may be a wrinkle, but you're the best doggone wrinkle. And I need you. I need that little finger. And if you're here today and you say, Mark, you know what? I hate, now, I've, I'm myself in front of you guys in case you hadn't noticed. That way next year you won't wonder, I won't have to wonder how to act. Amen? i just be myself. But if you're here today and you say, Mark, you know what? Wow. I've been a definite believer but I have yet to function as the body. And today, I give God permission to start talking to me how to function. Show me your hand. It, is it okay if I do it different this year? I do, unless you just need special prayer, you've already been up here for that. But if you want special ministry, I'm here for you. But I... I I told Pastor Jerry last night by text, I said, I have a feeling this year is going to be different. And I want everybody in this house, you say, Mark, I want God to speak with me about what I'm supposed to do. I'm tired of being a giraffe. I want to be a tower. I'm tired of just being an elephant. I want to be a parade. I'm tired of being an emu. I want to be a mob. I'm glad I'm a believer, but I'm ready to be the body. If you're here and you say, God, if you'll just speak to me, I'm willing and ready to be a wrinkle, a uvula, a ligament, a meniscus, whatever you want me to be. Show me your hand and hold it up there just a second. Father, I set over this congregation the anointing to start functioning like never before and anyone that has battled control issues that has devalued what you're putting in their heart to do I break that and I cast it out of them right now I cause the anointing to just set on this house today that these people start flowing and functioning in things that maybe no one will ever see or hear about in this church but the truth will be, they don't have to ask you for a blessing, but as they give, it's going to be given to them. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, we are going to give out of what you have called us to be. And out of that, the blessings will flow. And everybody in agreement said amen. Amen, 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 amen. Did you get something today? Well, I held you a little longer, and I apologize for that. But, hey, I'll give it back to you, Pastor Jerry.